Summer Camp Music Festival. Uh, my name is Alicia Post, and I am the art gallery manager, coordinator for all of the visual artists at Summer Camp that take part in the live, Soul Shine Live Art Gallery. All of the artists up here have artwork around the gallery in their sections on the wall. And all of us up here are going to talk about our work and our background in art making as well as some advice that we can give to those of you who might be interested in live painting at a festival yourself. Um, a little bit about my background. I grew up in Kankakee, Illinois, and I did not come from an artistic family at all, uh, but I was always really passionate about drawing and creating when I was a kid. And so when I went to college, just went to a local community college and took some painting and drawing classes there. And I loved it for getting a foundation started for art making, but it was also very restricting in a lot of ways because you had to do certain projects and fit into somewhat of a mold, um, which has its positives and negatives, especially when you're first learning. But what I did learn was the science behind art making. And that's what it is. It is very much a science and understanding your tools and how to use them and how they interact with the process that you're going through. After I graduated in 2006, I decided to take a break from school instead of going towards my bachelor's and eventually my master's so that I could teach. And I started looking into painting live at festivals. I was always really inspired by music and stories and cinema. And specifically with music, I was noticing that the art I was creating on my own, on my own terms, was far different than the work I was doing in school. And it was very much inspired by music I was listening to. So when I first started live painting, the very first painting I did was called Music's Brow, and it was a six foot by six foot painting that I started live. Which, not knowing what I was doing, is pretty ridiculous size to start your first live painting. I ended up working on it for an entire year, and I did not finish it at the first set of painting. During that year, I listened to a lot of Umphreys McGee <laughs> while I was painting that painting. And I started getting into the jam scene through Humphreys McGee, and I started learning about Mo, and then I went back in time a little bit, and I started listening to a lot of Zappa. And at that point, I had an opportunity to start tracking with an art collective called Intrinsic, art, Intrinsic Arts, and they're primarily fire performance group. But it's also a collective of people that make clothing, uh, people who make art, and I was able to travel to a different festival pretty much every weekend in 2012. And at first, I had no idea what I was doing. I All right, where was I? <laughs> so the first... Yeah, I was traveling every weekend at a different festival in 2012. And at first, I was very unprepared, and I didn't show up with any prints to sell. I was just showing up with my art supplies and my painting. The second year, I made sure to order prints, because a lot of people wanted to buy my art. And that is exactly what I would advise anybody first starting out to do. Invest in your work as little or as much as you want or can afford and make happen. So, I, <laughs> I was in the middle of giving advice to those of you who might be interested in painting at a festival. I'm gonna skip past a little bit so that I can save some time for the rest of our artist speakers and just say that if you have any interest at all in live painting, the best advice I can give you is apply. That's the best gift that I can do. Apply. If there's a festival in particular that you love going to and you would love to share your art with the community there, put an application in. If applications are not open, 
find an email, contact, send an email, and they most likely will see it and they will respond to it. And you will have an opportunity. You're probably going to get denied by many festivals because a lot of festivals like us are restricted on how many artists that we can have. And you get a lot of artists' um, applications in, and you want to have a diverse group. But I encourage you all, I, I still get denied when I apply for art gallery shows all the time. But I still do. And just understand that it's a process, and you might not be able to do it full time in the beginning, but you'll get there. When I was first live painting, I was also working as a pharmaceutical technician, and I did that for 10 years. I was very lucky. I had a boss that completely supported me as an artist. So anytime I asked off for work, from a Thursday to a Monday, she gave it to me. And she knew how passionate I was about it. So go towards those who will help assist you. I got fired from one pharmacy because my boss didn't want me calling or requesting off so that I could do what I love and what I was going to school for. I got another job at another pharmacy and she was all about it. And I actually painted her and I have her to credit for a lot of my success because I was able to financially support myself while doing this. It's the elephant in my muse series that I painted on wood at summer camp in 2014, I believe, the first year I was here. Della's yawning at me. Della, are you ready? Do you want to go next? No, it's Trinity turn next, sorry. Okay guys, thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna send it off to Trinity and we're just so happy to be sharing our stories with you and advice in any ways we can encourage creativity for all of you. Thank you. That's when I, I really kind of dove into it. I, I got really inspired by the art that I was seeing there. And over the years, I've watched it progress from being just like, there are music festivals to art and music festivals. And I think that's really important because it gives us this really amazing home base to kind of come together and have this moment of radical self-expression and creativity. And I know that when I come here, I learn something new every year. And not just summer camp, I'm talking like any festival that I've actually been able to come and paint. I, I discover something new about myself every time. It's not always just, you know, oh, we're going to show up and paint. There's this system of checks and balances that occurs where you have this really beautiful image in your head of what's going to happen, but that doesn't usually happen. It's this, like give and take, you know, it, for instance, I last night was having the darndest time with my painting, and I know a lot of us were because it was so wet, or in contrast, last year, it was so dry that my paint was drying so fast that I couldn't work with it, so I guess what I'm trying to say is music festivals, including art, is a wonderful gateway not just for us artists, but for also the patrons that arrive to inspire them to connect with their own creativity and for us as artists to be able to grow together. Because I know for myself, when I go home and I'm in my studio, I'm pretty antisocial. But when I come here, there's this wonderful collective of people that like, I know their names and it's like an instantaneous friendship because we connect with what we love doing more than anything. And as Alicia might have mentioned, some of us probably have day jobs still. Alicia does this full time. I was doing this full time for a couple of years, but I actually went back to do something that I enjoy doing. I bake part time. Because I just love food, you know? And, and it's, another, it's another expression of creativity. 
but it is really important to to give to your art when you're ready to, when you start to feel like you're growing those feathers and you really want to start flapping, like you're going to take off, you're going to go flying, start really investing in your art. Buy some prints. Just see what you can do with it. Buy better supplies. Invest in seminars, workshops if they're available. Definitely try and do that for yourself. And remember that it is okay to take breaks. It's really hard to live with that constant expectation that you put on yourself that you're gonna always grow, but you don't need to. Sometimes you just wanna, you wanna stay right there inside of that cocoon that you've made for yourself. And then burst forth and go do something really cool. That idea is gonna go off. Take breaks and, and don't take your work for granted. You know, love what you're doing every step of the way. And if it starts to feel like you're not loving it anymore, like maybe you really need to take a step forward, go for a walk, go outside, go find something really beautiful that's gonna inspire you. I find inspiration in the most random of things sometimes. And I think that that is really important as artists that we don't toxify ourselves with feeling like we need to present something all the time. And that's really difficult to do when you're growing as an artist. You're trying to build a fan base or just keep in touch with people and make new connections. You feel like you constantly need to put something out there. But I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you're, if you're growing your fan base, going out to these events, your people are there. And when you reach out to them, they're gonna get excited. So remember that you cannot divide by zero. You have to be able to give back to yourself to get to your heart. I think that's where I'm gonna end. I'm gonna pass it to Deb. Hey guys, uh, my name is Della. Um, I was, um, my artwork is the first one here, here on the right. Um, my stuff is, is uh, black and white with um, like fluorescence. Neons, no rainbows, I stay away from greens and reds, but uh, mostly magentas and fluorescent things. Um, most of my inspiration comes from um, environmental awareness. Um, if you look at my work, you can see a lot of uh, hurricanes and dry earth and rain and cut down trees and stuff, and it's got a little bit of touch of psychedelics in it. Um, for this piece, this is my piece that I've been working on uh, this weekend. Um, when I when I drove here, um, we were hit by this uh, system, and it was basically a torrential downpour. So I was like, I need to tap into the elements on my way there because I haven't um, live painted in two and a half years. So I, I felt like I needed, in order to get back to it, I needed to drag the energy from it. So. Um, I also live in Colorado, so there's, there's been a lot of fires going on, and I have a friend from New Mexico who's also dealing with, with her house maybe burning down, so um, I'm trying to create a, uh, an image of a hurricane coming through either New Mexico or Colorado, where there's never hurricanes, but this thing just drenches out the fires, you know, it, it, just, it just annihilates all the fires, and we can take a deep breath and, and be more at peace. Um, in my work, I, I subliminally like put uh, those elements, like the the fires are burning in the in the forest, but um, it's not really meant to freak you out or make you sad. It's more of an elemental, um, galactic feel. Um, so it's kind of like a prayer or a manifestation in a lot of my paintings. Um, also, a lot of them are self-portraits. Um, so it's something I'm going through, but I ended up ended up painting in the feminine form. Um, and I've been, uh, um, is there a question that you answer in the thing? Just keep going, okay. Um, I'm not a morning person either. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so my, style of painting is I start everything black and white and then um, slowly glaze the colors in. Um, kind of like oil painting but with acrylics. Um, for light painting at festivals you never know what kind of elements you're going to get so it's it's easier to bring acrylics um, better than oils. 
but um, this piece is going to be get, gaining more and more uh, color um, as we go by, and um, uh, yeah, so that's as far as uh, my techniques, but um, I was born in Mexico, I was raised in Puerto Rico, I live in Boulder, Colorado, um, I think as an artist you kind of have to move every five to six years to keep the momentum going, you know, it's, I, I'd love to you know, put a down payment on a house, but I'm like, damn, in five years, I'm, I'm probably gonna wanna move, you know, like, uh, but um, I've been very blessed to, to make a living out of this. This is my 15th year now or so, um, and, um, I, you know, half of it is live painting, touring, um, getting a, a fan base that way, but then the other half is at home, introvert style, um, and those are like commission work, or my personal work. Um, uh, and that's it for me. Yeah. I feel like such a tough act to follow already. I, mean, I feel like this is almost more for us. Like, we are just like want to know so much about each other and art friends, you know, and it really is this, like, kindred spirit of, like, yes, our people, you know. But, uh, my name is Melissa Brock. My artwork is the first artwork to the left over there. Um, yeah, this whole experience is so special to me. Like, I feel like I'm going to cry already. <laughs> um, I'm from Ottawa, Illinois, so basically this is, like, home turf, you know, an hour away, like, the fact that this festival started right as I was kind of coming of age, and I went to art school at Northern Illinois University, and did the whole traditional art route of, you know, classic education, of learning the basics, but it never really grabbed me, nothing really super inspired me, and then I started to go to music festivals, and Definitely summer camp was like the first one that was just like, <gasps> I'm home, you know, and it was kind of such bare bones the first few years, and I just had such a personal awakening, and then was able to feel so inspired, I mean, kind of like Alicia touched on, it's like the music, like I really realized that like, music is the primary creative force that motivates me, lets my emotions come out, and you know, that's really all artwork is, really, is just kind of processing emotions and putting them down and showing other people, and it's just so special to come into a festival like this and realize that there are other similar people like you out there, and it's such a refreshing, <clears throat> kind of like, faith in humanity, I feel like, and the connections and the loving openness that you can find in a place like this, so it's just so special, and I ended up doing different artworks, and I came here and was like, there needs to be art, there needs to be trippy stuff in the forest, there needs to be, like, I could literally see all of this, and it was so like, how do we make this happen, and I got, I was lucky enough to be a part of a crew that painted along the stage, I think it was 2000, six, seven, and eight. I think 2004 was my first, but it was really great to give back and, you know, have a bunch of people to create something and then admire it throughout the week. And so it was really powerful. And I would try to do little installations around just in the forest. And people must have liked them because they stole them, like on Thursday night or Friday morning. So I tried, but... <laughs> And so it was really cool because it just, like, these literally are my roots. And so it's really cool because my light painting, I really wanted to incorporate this whole, it's almost kind of like a story of the emotion and intention behind this whole, like, coming full circle of me as an artist. Like, I basically grew up here, did all, like, just touring and midwest jam bandy goodness all over the place then i started going to burning man in 2005 started to get electronic trippy and it's like kind of like this whole 
you know, and started to been able to just, yeah, like put myself out there and just really like apply the things because I never really thought, oh, I need to like really try. <clears throat> and it's just been such a process because I feel like the one thing that I could say to other people that helped me personally as an artist was basically taming my ego. Like I feel like when I was really young and just doing things and you kind of, you know, like late high school, early college years, it's easy to kind of just be like, and now that I'm older, I'm 38, so I'm kind of at that like sweet spot age where, you know, like mature enough, but you know. But it's interesting now looking back on younger people and I see the reflection of myself of how I was like, I want it and I want it now and like people should just recognize like this is what I have to offer. And then it was like years of like doing meditation and kind of getting more grounded and like being around teachers that were super humbling, you know, and really kind of like mellowing myself and grounding and like touching the earth and literally like planting and just being like roots. And then all of a sudden it's like a plant. Like I'm able to like grow, express, and then like bloom and it's like, so cool and it's all timing and the flow and everyone's creative spark what they have will come to you like when it's supposed to happen you just literally keep trucking you just do what you do and it's really cool because it's like there's so many other loving people to just hold you when you're down and like pick you back up and that's all artists it's just like expressing creating reflecting and then like loving you know so um, yeah, I think that's kind of all I have. I kind of just got to a point where I'm like, and this is the art. This is all of us. We love you. Thank you guys so much. I love all of you artists. Everybody so much. This is like the dream come true. Thank you, Alicia, so much for putting this all together. She's like the art gallery mama over here. So thank you all. also had the same sense as Melissa about this being like my home turf. My first summer camp was 13 years ago. I was such a punk 16 year old and like had no idea that this was a world. I remember walking in and seeing, first thing, big bonfire and all these guys playing their drums and a woman dressed in tribal like, you know, dancing and chanting and I was like, what the hell? Like this is like a movie. And um, I was not an artist then at all. Like I never drew when I was a kid. I did not think of myself as an artist. I definitely had that mentality of I suck at art. I know a lot of you can probably relate to that. And um, so it is just a dream, a dream. And also very like duh to me that I would be here now. So very full circle like you were saying. Um, the two things that have really gotten me through the last three years of like really heavily pursuing my art is one, positive affirmations, and all these guys know that I'm all about it and constantly using positive affirmations. So literally anything that you want to accomplish, just start making the statement as if it's already true. Like you don't have to do any other work because when you make that statement, you're putting that vibration out into the world and naturally you will begin to take inspired action that doesn't feel like work, it doesn't feel like hustling, it just feels like fun and it feels like play. Like I have gotten like almost no sleep since I got here on Wednesday and I'm okay and <laughs> I'm feeling awesome and that leads me to my second point which is about self-care. Like <laughs> We are not here to work and hustle, you guys. I cannot emphasize that enough. We're here to enjoy and to discover ourselves. And the best way to do that is with self-care. So I have made sure that I've been doing yoga this whole time. I've given myself time to rest. I need time away from people to like recenter myself. And I've learned those things about me. And so I will like be really straight about making sure I get that time. And in my perspective, that has just made this whole process really smooth. That's why I feel like, of course, I'm here painting at summer camp because I've done like the best that I can do for myself. And um, 
yeah, that just makes me feel really proud of me and just so grateful to be up here with you guys. Like, you are amazing artists and oh, thank you. Thank you for sharing this time and this energy with me. <laughs> and thank you guys. Hello, summer camp. Are you ready to rock and roll? So I'm really excited to be here. Uh, this was my home festival back in 2010. It was the first time I ever went to anything like this, and it really opened my eyes to just what's going on here. Like, just the amount of like music and arts and fire spinning it was the first time I ever saw that, which I do as well. Uh, and it was really inspiring. So it was always a dream of mine to get to be a part of this art gallery and be an official artist here. So I'm really happy to be here, I'm super pumped. And yeah, back in that time, when I was going to my first festivals, uh, I was going to school for graphic design in Wisconsin at UW-Madison. And I was doing a ton of new things, just enjoying life, seeing where, where everything took me. And I tried to use music festivals as a platform to like share my artwork with people. Uh, so when I would make like screen printed posters in like a class, I would bring a ton of them to a festival and share them to people in the parking lot, like sell them and just the amount of people that were like, wow, this is so cool and unique, like it just made me feel good and made me feel like I want to keep doing this. I want to keep sharing what I have and feeling that energy come back to me. So I kept doing that. When I graduated, I started working in screen printing companies, designing t-shirts. So I would use that opportunity to get discounted shirts. And then I was moving on to graphics on shirts for festivals and getting my artwork out that way. And yeah, just kept using whatever job I had at the time to like make materials for discounted prices. I worked at a sign shop. I used a lot of those boards to like create paintings. I printed a lot of like very unique like industrial signs of my artwork on it which I couldn't afford any other way. And basically, it was kind of a in and out, swinging door type of job because so many new people would be looking for jobs in that industry, that it was like a revolving door and I didn't feel super appreciated. It was always on to the next thing. This is just a stage. And eventually I got tired of it and now I'm doing a part-time thing where it allows me to like have the time to invest in my artwork and keep going out on the weekends and being able to share with everybody around me. And yet I still have like the steady income that I can continue to do those things and save, which has been really nice. Like I was doing independent art for two years going into the pandemic. So I was just doing art, like commissions, hitting up friends online, people I met at all these events throughout all the years. And just found so much support, like it was literally funding my entire life, like food on my table, like home over my head, like it felt good, but it was also like month to month, like nothing was ever guaranteed, like it was always like this feeling of you have to do this because you have to keep living. And that honestly, like just everything blew up from there because I was making so much art all the time, every day, training it like a nine to five. and. Honestly, I feel like I grew so much during that time period and in the beginning like two weeks before the initial pandemic started I came out with a Milwaukee coloring book, which is where I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin And it just took off because it was the perfect time I've been working on it for like two years and obviously I didn't know the pandemic was gonna happen but everybody was looking for something to do at home and it got me into people's homes and I ended up getting on the news to promote it. I got into a ton of businesses all around town and the community started to like recognize me. And it's like just people from all over town and it feels good to like have that recognition and now be moving in new directions. Like I'm trying more art galleries, more like of those fine art settings, which I never really did. I just kind of like made it happen for myself because I didn't really have anybody extending offers to just, you know, set up shop. but. I don't know, it's been nice because now I feel like there's more momentum and now I do have that where people are like, oh, I've seen your art here, would you like to display at this other place or would you like this opportunity to come and paint at this event, which has been really nice too because it's been opening the door to so many other things and yeah, it just feels like uh, a 
coming of age in a sense because this is something I've been wanting to do for the last 12 years now. And yeah, it just feels awesome to be here. I'm so grateful. And yeah, I found like this place is just so awesome and unique, you know, like there's really no other place like it. And yeah, I'm glad to be here with all these artists and so much talent here on the stage. And thanks for having me, everyone. Hey, uh, my name is Pat Merrick. Uh, this is my third year. Um, and uh, gosh, I guess um, I kind of grew up in a uh, a family where art was seen as more of a hobby. And um, I knew it it was inevitable that I would have to go this path. So I had a quite, quite a, I was surrounded by love, but I had a quite difficult path. I think um, uh, choosing this direction, um, it's, it's not easy. So I think like one of the reasons why I'm up here is if I could just kind of uh, connect with like my past self, uh, you know, give, give myself some advice. You know, if there's somebody out there who wants to pursue art, but they don't see that uh, it's something that uh, you can live off of. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I can say that I do make a living uh, in selling my work. I'm, I'm so glad that I ended up pursuing it. But yeah, it wasn't really a decision. I, I feel like uh, it chose me. And there are times where uh, you may have some lows, um, but there was no other way. I think uh, this, this definitely chose me. So um, yeah, I kind of had to go with it. So being, you know, Third year, I'm so glad to be back. Gosh, I, uh, I studied painting and sculpture at Northern Illinois. I uh, did, not, did not finish my degree, but I uh, stuck with it. I, I, I met a bunch of fantastic musicians, and from there I started, I became you know a big fan of their music, so I started doing posters, I created a moniker, and I went on all, gosh, like so many adventures. I went to Colorado. Now I'm back here, currently in uh, Bridgeport, uh, in Chicago on the south side. And, uh, gosh, yeah, I say primarily I'm, uh, at this moment, I'm an acrylic painter. I do a lot of drawing. Um, I can't really sum up my work, and I don't actually like to give myself a, a label. I don't know, uh, abstract, surrealist, whatever. I think that's constantly going to change. I think I'll know what I am when I'm done, right? I think to give myself a label now will make me feel like I have to kind of fill that moment, right? I don't want to choose uh, a direction, right? I, I work in chapters, so my work is constantly changing. So, uh, you know, two years ago, it was almost all uh, oil paintings. So now I'm working in almost acrylic, uh, like all acrylic. I'm planning, a, a graphite series later this year. It's been kind of a, a, a strange year for me. Uh, recently, I've been involved in uh, a lot of charity work for Ukraine. Um, so that's kind of just like, because it kind of just unfolded so quickly, uh, I kind of put everything on pause and uh, and kind of been working with like a lot of uh, uh, Ukrainians in Chicago, the Chicago area. We ended up raising, I think at this point we're around 40 grand. We ended up raising, which is fantastic. Um, that's like, I think that's probably, that kind of made me feel like uh, this thing that I'm doing is bigger than myself, right? Uh, getting involved in helping was monumental, so I put everything on pause, we raised a bunch of money, we're gonna continue doing that. Uh, I'm already working with people to, you know, raise money for other um, other projects. We wanna start focusing on uh, also some of the things that we're seeing in Chicago, right? So I'm working with some, some more uh, groups and hopefully start to raise awareness and, and money for some uh, more local, uh, causes. 
Um, <clears throat> for advice to young artists out there, it's it's kind of difficult. I, I'd say the best advice I could give you is kind of look for what suits you. I don't think that the advice that I got will be right for other artists, right? I think you kind of have to cultivate this thing. Surround yourself with people who show you love and support and wisdom, right? That was, I think, one of the most important things was surrounding myself with old, wise people. People who understand what I'm going through and uh, lift me up, right? Uh, so kind of bring those people near you and really listen. Um, another thing is, um, if you're choosing art as your vocation, if you're actually trying to live off of this, expect to be poor. And, and, and for real, like, like, understand that it will be difficult, but don't fall in love with that despair, right? But remember that, remember that, that moment, that time you were broke when you were hungry. Uh, but don't fall in love with it, right? Uh, it is a difficult path, but it, it's so important that if you really want to do it, you, you have to uh, pursue it. Uh, yeah, and just don't fall in love with that despair. Remember it and keep going. Um, also, try to refine the things that you're not quite good at, right? Like the business aspect of it is really uncomfortable. I hate trying to play this character uh, and selling my stuff, being, you know, like being my own hype man, right? And blasting your stuff. Sometimes I feel like such an imposter, like I have to play this character to sell my work. Um, but you, you have to, that's a necessity. You have to kind of cultivate this, this voice um, I don't like posting on social media, but it's a necessity. And also, another important thing is find that space that you're comfortable with. I think some people cultivate kind of an Etsy crowd. Some people want to do galleries. Maybe that's your route. Some people want to do festivals. Maybe that's your route. So you gotta kind of find that that route that you want to take and kind of refine everything you can. Like I think. There's like, I mean, you have a great example. Everyone has kind of like amazing skills. Like I'm learning so much about like, you know, how everyone approaches selling at festivals. So if this is your thing, come and talk to who's, you know, selling a lot of work. Um, so yeah, <laughs> other than that, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be back here. I'm way more nervous than I look. <laughs> My, this mic is so sweaty. Uh, um, I'm glad for this opportunity. I'm um, so happy to be here. If anyone has any questions, please approach me. And um, yeah, that's all. And again, um, Pat Merrick, my work right over there. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, I've uh, recently, the most recent charity, so like the first event we did, we did four different events. Um, recently, we just did Rosin for Ukraine. So right now, gosh, I think we've got to kind of expand on some other projects. Um, that's still kind of unfolding. Um, but yeah, come up to me if you have any questions. I can kind of elaborate on all of that and break it down for you and kind of show you, uh, uh, break down kind of what we've done. So, right. I just want to thank all of you so much for coming up here and braving this whole thing out. As artists, oftentimes we can be super introverted, less extroverted. I think live painting helps us be extroverted and share our work. So to come up here and vocalize your backgrounds and everything, thank you so much for coming up here and doing that, sharing with all of you. Um, I'm so grateful to Summer Camp Music Festival for allowing us to have this opportunity. After years and years of traveling around the country and painting at live festivals, I have never seen, I know they exist, but they are very few and far in between. 
to have the opportunity to give a voice to the visual work that we create. So thank you, Summer Camp. Thank you, Soul Shine and the whole team. Thanks, Murph, for the sound and organizing and the batteries. I'm just so grateful that we get to do this every year now. Um, last year was our first. And take a look around. Like Pat said, feel free to come up and talk to any of us. Ask questions. If you have an interest in live painting at this festival, come speak with me. I would love to see your work and give you advice on how to apply. And that's it. Thank you so much.